Everybody here knows who BGR is, right? Biblical gender roles? It's not the topic of today's video, but he's... Kinda? It'll make sense in a second. So, we are talking about a guy named Mark Gunger. Who, again, is not biblical gender roles, but you're going to see some very, very similar veins, I'll say. Uh, Mark Gunger is a marriage seminar type of guy. Uh, so, of course, not the same thing that biblical gender roles tends to do, where he just argues that women should be, you know, beat. But there's a thing that was posted to me that I want to go ahead and take a look at. Let's go ahead and flip that on the screen. Woo! There it is. And it might be hard to read, so let me see if maybe I can zoom in on it a little bit so people can see it better. That's a bit better. So, Mark Gunger has some information for us about when a spouse refuses sex. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And remember, he's not biblical gender roles, but it's going to sound a lot like biblical gender roles. So, he begins by saying, When a spouse refuses sex, we're going to use the BGR voice still. I have been posting about what it means to be sexually unfaithful. While these are not exhaustive posts, in other words, not every single angle is covered, my goal is to challenge the thinking of many and hope that they arrive at a healthy biblical perspective. Now, anytime that we are given the biblical perspective on marriage, sex, anything like that. Just remember that we're talking about the same Bible that argues things like 50 shekels of silver for a, for, for, for a sexually assaulted uh, non-married woman who, that views things like this as property crimes as opposed to crimes against real-life breathing human beings. Uh, just going to go ahead and poison that well real quick. If we're talking about biblical marriage... These things are almost always very much in the guy's favor and never take into consider uh never take into consideration the ideas or the thoughts of the woman in the in the relationship or of course even if the person is non-binary or anything like that none of that's considered in these conversations. So the clearest and most obvious form of sexual unfaithfulness is when a person engages in physical sex with someone who is not their spouse. Ah, we've already got a point of contention. So, sexual unfaithless unfaithlessness is when a person engages in sex with someone who is not their spouse. So what happens if somebody is polyamorous, as an example? They are engaging in sex with somebody who's not their spouse, but they're not being unfaithful. Well, assuming that that's in the rules that they've set up. If, you were, if you're poly and you just go and have sex with someone and your partner isn't okay with it, that doesn't... Being poly doesn't excuse you for cheating on your partner. Uh, you still have to have that conversation with them, but there is an area where you can do that. Now, granted, he does say that not every angle is covered, but I don't care. I really don't care because, again, this isn't... Th it's like those people have to necessarily be excluded from this conversation. And as a poly person, I don't want to be excluded from these conversations. Just, just throwing that out there. That it's not the only form of sexual unfaithlessness. To understand where I'm coming from, one must ask, what does it mean to be faithful? One is faithful in prayer if they pray. Oh, dear. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. I know where this is going. This is going to say you're, you're unfaithful if you don't fuck your partner whenever they want you to, right? If one does not pray, then they are not being faithful in prayer. If one does not show up to work and does and not do their job, they are... I can't read and do the voice at the same time. God damn it. Mickey Mouse is coming out then. Fuck it. If one shows up to work and does their job, they are considered a faithful employee of the Disney Corporation. If they don't, then they are unfaithful. That's what you get. That's what lends, that's what lends you in the pit. Anyone who can always be depended on is called faithful. Those who always perform or... Discharge... <laughs> Discharge. <laughs> We're talking about sex, and he's going to use that language. Discharge. Why would you do that? Okay. They discharge their duties and their... <laughs> duties. They're called unfaithful, or they're called faithful. 
When an individual refuses sex on an extended basis to their spouse, they are being sexually unfaithful. Okay, I don't, I don't agree with that one. Yeah, I don't agree with that. So, so. Nobody is owed sex. Nobody is owed another person's body. <laughs> just say coom. We're just gonna say coom now. All of you are simps and coomers. How's it going, the Emily the Fennec? Um, so, yeah, no. I don't agree with that. Nobody is owed someone's body. Being in a relationship with someone does not mean that you are owed their body. For instance, if you're asexual uh, or you're sex repulsed, there's not a point where somebody is owed your body. Now, if that is an arrangement that your partner is not okay with, if they are not, if if they have sexual needs that are not being fulfilled, you guys may need to figure out an arrangement, but I don't know if I'd call that unfaithlessness. I don't think I would call that unfaithlessness. I really don't. Because they are being faithful. They're they're not having sex with anybody else. I don't know if I'm comfortable saying they're being unfaithful. You might personally feel unfulfilled, but that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. A husband should fulfill his marital duty to sex his wife. It says sex to his wife, but I, I read that wrong. Marital duty to sex his wife. And likewise, the wife to her husband. Do not deprive each other. That's in 1 Corinthians. So, okay, I can understand if he's going to try to use that as a biblical perspective. Like, hey, you if you use the Bible as the book for how to work your your relationship... Then sure, maybe. But I, I, I let me let, let me throw you out a better argument. Maybe don't use the Bible as the book you use to form the basis of your relationship. Maybe don't. Maybe don't. Just, just again, the book that argues that if a virgin is is taken against her will by someone else, then fifty shekels of silver are involved, and then a potential marriage with the assaulter is argued. I'm just going to go and say that that views the woman as property. It views it as a property crime. And using that book as the foundation for a relationship, not functional. Not good. If you want to use that book, you know, to say, hey, this is what people believed back then. Sure. Why not? But using that book to say this is what we should, we should believe right now. Mm -hmm. Also, oh, Storm on Parade. Them buoy socialists here. Rumors of forced feminizations are false. They are coerced feminizations. I love that. <laughs> Remember, everybody, forced feminized Nazis. Never look at Couples are to be sexually faithful to... We've moved back to Tristan from Yuki of the Abridged series. Couples are to be sexually faithful to one another. When one unilaterally decides to deny sex to their partner, they are no longer sexually faithful. More clearly stated... The man or woman who refuses sex to their spouse is being sexually unfaithful. And again, no. There's a myriad of reasons in which someone would not refuse sex to their person. Now, he seems to cover those. We're going to cover that real quick. We are not talking about people who are having physical problems in those abusive situations. We are talking about an individual, for whatever reason, just refusing to be sexually intimate with their spouse. So again, you are not owed someone's body. If you ask someone for sex and they say no, them saying no is a justifiable reason. That is plenty. Like, the, the end of their bargain with you and them in the exchange of potential coitus, that, that, that's done. The exchange is done. No on the mere merits of not wanting to is perfectly freaking valid. And arguing otherwise, I, I have issue with. Also, Jeebus... We have a lot of followers coming in. Thank you, Uncle Dirty, for following. Epsilon for following. City Life. Zizekitus? I, I, I don't know. Space Time Pop and Agender Blair. Thank you all. And Nowen. Thank you all for following. Every single one of you. Holy crap. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and see where he ends things with. At its core, marriage is a sexual contract. 
<laughs> no, if two asexual people marry because they want to have financial jurisdiction where each other is concerned, or want to be able to be there in the ICU, for instance, or have different uh, relationships they need to maintain where children are concerned, those are all parts of that contract. It need not be sexual at all. Again, saying no on the mere merit of wanting of not wanting to is 100% valid where sex is concerned. And language like this coerces people who otherwise don't want to have sex into having it. It guilts them into it. And that's not fair to anybody. Sex should be a two-way street. It should be something that you and your partner do because you want to with each other, not because you are contractually obligated by the marriage gods. Refusing sex to your partner is a violation of the contract. It's covenant if you're super, super spiritual. Thank you very much, Chrissia and Endless Big for following. I was still stuck. I'm still stuck on the Disney Corporation, everyone. Bottom line is that couples are supposed to be sexually active with each other. Except ace people. Except sexually repulsed people. Except traumatized people. Except, except, except... <laughs> when they refuse, and refuse is the key word here, they are being unfaithful sexually. And in such cases, I will advise the same steps as if one were having sex with a person who was not their spouse. Confront the unfaithlessness, file for separation, and in my next post, I will explain why separation is the best option in such case. Often, it is the only real option. All right, guys. You heard it here from, from uh, relationship advice expert Mark Gunger. If you're asexual, people will only ever want to divorce you. I guess, according to him. I don't agree with that. That's stupid. That's dumb. So I mentioned that this sounds a lot like BGR, and it does. Now, the only things that are not here, BGR has the overtones of if your wife is unfaithful, then maybe also engage in corporal punishment. So, like, that's a problem. Uh, that doesn't seem to be what Mark is going for here. He doesn't seem to be going full on abuse your spouse because they didn't wear makeup right that day, which BGR tends to do. He's not doing that. But it's still shitty. I think that this is coercive. This is literally guilt tripping and manipulating people into sleeping with you who otherwise didn't wouldn't want to or have no business doing so. And again, it leaves so many people out of the conversation. If you're polyamorous, you're left out of this conversation. If you're ace, you're left out of this conversation. And I wonder what he thinks about gay marriage. Does he think that there's a spousal obligation there? Or does he just think that putting it up the pooper is too bad? Never do. Never do. Uh, that said, though, what do you guys think? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comment section of this video when it goes to VOD form. And thank you all for popping over and following. this. Uh, for those who are watching over on YouTube alone, this is happening on the tail end of Hannah Reloaded doing a, uh, a raid of my channel. So thank you very much for that, Hannah. Hopefully we'll be able to do something in the future uh, because we have not actually done that before. I don't think we'll work together. That said, though, thank you very much for the raid. Thank you, everybody who followed during the course of the stream. Thank you, Jade15, for following just a few seconds ago. Seriously, thank you all. This means the world to me. And if you are not following me over on Twitch, if you're watching this over on YouTube, please go ahead and consider doing so. I'm going to be doing most of my live streams over there for a little while and see how that goes forward. But all of the VODs will still be available over on YouTube. That's never going to go away. Also, Baja Blast... You have gotten into the very tail end of the recording session. Thank you very much for the follow. As always, everyone, insert into video tagline here.